Hey, Bob, I'm doing well, thanks. How about yourself? Yeah, cool, man. How's the, uh, how's, is it London? You're down in London, aren't you? Yeah, just down in kind of greater London area, just a bit further out in uh, how's, Hornchurch. How's it looking? How's it looking? No, it's looking beautiful today. I mean, hopefully I'll get a chance to go out for a cycle later. It's just, look, yeah, really warm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's the same, it's the same up here. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get straight into this. Uh, so tell me a bit about yourself and what your background is. So we're talking a little bit of an overview there? Yeah, yeah, just a bit of an overview. So what have you done since uh, you, a little bit before you came to Edge Hill, because I know you come to Edge yeah. Hill, and then what you've done since, because I know you've done pretty much everything here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I'll kind of start from, I'll give you a bit of a background um, back in London. I mean, my roots, um, I grew up in like one of the most deprived areas of London, um, which sounds maybe not the best of scenarios, but I kind of flipped it on its head um, and I had loads of opportunities because in my area, there was, they gave, gave so many summer schools. I mean, there was every, every, kind, every time there was a half term, I signed up to all the courses that were available from allotments, building go-karts. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. Um, and my mum was even saying to me yesterday, Dan, where would you get all the energy from? <laughs> um, and yeah, so I just kind of grew from there, working with communities. Um, and then that stemmed onto environmental issues. So I found that I really enjoyed being in the outdoors and especially when the weather's like this. <laughs> it's gorgeous, yeah. Um, but yeah, just... What I found is when you when you talk about the environment with other people, that they always automatically their interest is kind of comes away a little bit. And I know it's changed a little bit in the last few years of the, the movements that have that have been going going around. Um, but I love finding ways to to make that conversation interesting around the environment and and trying to flip it on it on its head, as I said before, and, and make it really interesting. Um, whether that's for activities and engaging and, and, and stuff like that, really. Um, but yeah, so the challenge for me is kind of finding roles. Like you said, I tried everything at university and it's trying to find those roles that really do suit me and, and those kind of motivations that I have. Yeah. So what sort of, what sort of stuff did you do at Edge Hill? Because when I, cause you joined about two or three years before me. Um, and the first thing I got taught when I came here is dandy. That's, that's all that. <laughs> um, and I just, just wanted to get a background on what you have done. Obviously, I know you as uh, the VP uh, down at the SU. Uh, I know you're not <laughs> currently doing that. But what else have you done, including that? Um, I mean, from from week one of going to university, I, I, I went straight in with, with the idea of I want to make the most of this experience. And I mean, it was a, an amazing opportunity to be, to be able to go to university and, and I really wanted to make the most of that opportunity. So I think from week one, I, I got my first job working in student recruitment. Um, and it kind of grew from there, um, speaking to different departments. I think in the end, it was like nine, something crazy, like nine departments that I worked for. Um, wow. And I just tried, tried to do a little bit of everything. Now, it's, it sounds brilliant, but kind of looking back on it, maybe I should have focused a, a little bit more. Um, but I definitely, definitely really enjoyed the the chance to be able to work with so many amazing people and and really grow and and gain that experience from everybody so where do you where do you think that motivation comes from so why why do you think you worked in so many different departments and got yourself involved so so much um it's it's, it's probably be, because i think from i mean from from a younger age my, my parents gave me a, a chance to they really installed in, in me I could do whatever I mean they encouraged me to do the best that I could do um and and from that it was it was trying every kind of sport that was out there and and trying to find the things that I really enjoyed and, and sometimes find things that I didn't enjoy as well um and rather than just kind of be set in in one area it's I think what I've found is you try to eliminate the experiences that maybe you don't want to do in the future and keep the ones close to heart that you do yeah, definitely. I, I, I definitely agree with that because I think it is, it is important to know what you want to do, but it's also important to know what you don't want to do. Because then, like you said, you can you can rule it out and go, oh, yeah, I've, I've actually done that. So I know I know I don't like that. I can focus on what I do want to do. So I think that's that's very important to to have a try and have a go. I just have a, like, speaking of one of your uh, your uh, campaign slogans, give it a go. <laughs> I think that, that just works so well. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, a hundred, hundred percent. It's it's exactly. And I've been trying to speak to my brother, who's uh, fifteen, um, about to go to to sixth form, and and trying to install that that similar kind of mindset in him that be willing to to get involved and and don't be afraid of failure, um, and just try your best, really. Yeah. So, what was your like relationship with failure? Do you do you like failing, or is there a certain like element of it that you don't like or do you actively look for it because it seems to me that person like you that it just doesn't bother you and it doesn't affect you is that is that, is that right of me to assume I think when I was younger I definitely found it more difficult to, to kind of understand the, the concept of failure but I think growing up it was it was something that I, I learned to love um in, in many different ways and, it, and it's about how you how do you build yourself build, build yourself to come back even stronger after so as long as you learn learn from your your failure it's um that's, that's the point of it really yeah definitely yeah so do you think like flipping on the side do you think anybody can be successful or do you think there's certain qualities that you need to to put you on that journey so i mean to be successful i mean i think anyone can be successful but it depends on what you measure as success okay. um so kind of i mean it's gonna get a little bit deep but in in my life my mantra is, as I've grown, is to, to be happy um, and to be, posit- and be positive to those that surround me. Um, I mean, I've been in a stage where I was saving and saving and saving um, to try and get a bit of a business capital, to, uh, business capital together. Um, and I've, I had a bit of a revelation that actually it was inhibiting my, not only my own positive, positivity, but those around me as well. Yeah. Um, and, and I felt like I wasn't being true to myself. Okay. So... Um, I mean, you've got to find, find that balance. I, I probably, after that, went a little bit too far on the other side and enjoying myself a little bit too much. So, <laughs> luckily, I managed to find that middle ground there. <laughs> yeah, no, you need to... Uh, I, think, I think you used the key word there, which is, which is balance. Like, and I think that goes with anything. Like, even with something as simple as, like, what you eat, there's, I know loads of people who are on, like, diets and strict, and I think everything in moderation mm. is fine. It's okay. Uh, but that's just... That's just my opinion. <laughs> so no, what that, sort of, 100%. yeah, carry on, carry on. Um, yeah, I mean, like, like you said, with like, what you're eating and it's about that like, kind of that learning process and what you're, what you're taking in. And, um, and as long as you're aware of what you're, you're doing and, and it's fine, about it's just kind of that awareness of what you're doing um, and be able to look back and change the perspective on things to see actually how you can be your best. Definitely, yeah. So, like I said in the introduction, that we we are both are like sort of starting starting our journeys. Um, so what's what's your motivation at, at the beginning of that road? What's what's your like? What do you want to achieve? Um. So it's an interesting question. I mean, I mean, I think with motivation is that this common mis- misconception that the motivation is that comes after starting a behaviour, not before. Right. Um. Whereas like active inspiration is far more powerful, like even probably the listeners coming in today, the, the step they're taking to listen isn't even is is like the first thing they're doing, and then anything that comes afterwards, it's it's that it's that kind of inception feeling um, yeah. that you, you that you get from it. Um, but with that in mind, I mean I've I I feel like I've grown quite a bit, um, and what I would like to do is kind of I'm motivated to leave the world in a better shape. Than what than when I arrived. Yeah. So it's it sounds super cheesy. Um, no, 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 no. I agree. I totally agree. I mean, um, now obviously, I'm going to join myself along the way, but I think that's kind of at at my core, really. Yeah. No. I think having that having that mindset and having that thing that where it is good to help people and it is good to like give out your time or whatever it may be. So my mum always said like, if you have the opportunity to help someone, you you should. You definitely, definitely, definitely should, because we're in a privileged position. Like we've got like roots over our heads, we've got food in our bellies, so we're actually yeah. quite lucky, and we're actually quite fortunate to be doing what we're doing. And even like now, like talking over over a video call, that's like so lucky to be able to do these sort of things. No, definitely. I mean, it's a privilege that sometimes not everyone understands. So it's it's like that awareness of of where you are at the moment and, and the journey is to get to even this point as well yeah definitely yeah so what do you because I know you're quite you're quite a busy guy you like to keep yourself busy <laughs> and so what, what sort of stuff do you like doing in your free time 
I mean, so I, lo I love learning, um, whether it's like about the environment, cooking, playing guitar. I mean, I absolutely love it. And outside of that, spending time exercising in nature, um, I always try to find like new sports and, and push my boundaries as well. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of links into what the, the motivation um, and recharging those batteries of, of how, how you'd like to be your best self. So everyone has these kind of conceptions that they can always be 100%. But I think you've got to kind of t take a step back and, and realize you've got to do other things that allow you to be your best self. Um, or was it Lizzo said, live your best life? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, that's actually like, that's, that concept's new to me because I've always, until like recently, always gave 100%. I think you're right. You have to sometimes do something fun and like just take a step back, go, okay, breathe. And then, and then you can give, go back and give it your all. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's interesting you said that, yeah. Um, but yeah, like definitely, definitely at the moment, um, kind of concentrated free time, so things have changed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So what what has changed for you? Because I know you were you were at at Edge Hill, um, you were doing like amazingly well there. What was what's changed for you since lockdown and and quarantine started? Um. So I think for me, I mean, I've struggled with. The, a little bit in the last few years in kind of the former years of university and I think the crap's kind of started to show a little bit like I said about if you give it your 100% all the time then sometimes it can be detrimental to you to you as a, as a person um, and yes. so I think probably and like putting so much time and effort into motivating other people that I kind of started to lose a little bit of who I was as a person okay. um, so I'm probably one of the few people out there that actually really appreciated having time to reflect, reset um, on my trajectory um, okay. and bringing those things that I love uh, doing and the people that I love doing, uh, love being around, um, <laughs> uh, close to my heart, really. Um, yeah, cool. That's, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, um, so we, we've, because we only met, what, last year, properly, properly? Yeah. Um, on the Yellowstone trip. Oh, so, it was amazing. It was, it was absolutely incredible. So me and Dan uh, went over to Yellowstone National Park in America, and it was just the, how would you, it's just, I can't, I wish my vocabulary was big enough to explain how amazing it was. It was <laughs> I just actually, so good. I actually went over the video that you, the, the vlog you put together for it this morning, and it made a throwback, like, for, for me, it was, oh, so yeah. lucky, really. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it's been, I think it's just over a year, because we flew out on the 17th, of May 2019 uh, so yeah so it's been like a year and two weeks which is nuts which is absolutely crazy and yeah yeah so we yeah so we met there and we've just had this friendship ever since and it's just oh, weird that yeah it's just weird that someone you've known for a year is knows you better than someone you've known for 20 years and I think that's crazy I know I mean I remember the conversations um that we're we're having we we drove up to the the lakes and um i think there's been moments where we've just kind of connected on on a level with, with yeah. different kind of interests and 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 the way we we think about things as well that thought process yeah don't get me wrong i, I still think you're a dickhead but <laughs> <laughs> i don't you worry you can be one as well <laughs> <laughs> all right so um what so what else has changed for you uh since lockdown has uh, has started so I know you, you moved back home, didn't you? Yeah, so I, I managed to have a, a bit of a chance to, to, to get back and, and spend some time, more time with family um, because that was one of other things. University is a whirlwind and what, by the time you get into it, that you, can't, you kind of forget some of the things that you should be maybe spending more time on. Um, yeah. And not to say they're not there, but sometimes you put them maybe not as high up on the priority list that they should be. Um, so it's been great to spend more time with family, um, friends on vir virtually as well, um, exercising more, um, developing new skills and kind of reinforcing the ones that I've, that I've kind of lost along the way. Yeah. So we're, yeah, I think, yeah, like, like you, I think we're using this time wisely because I think it's very easy to just sit back and watch Netflix, which I, let, let's be honest, we do as well. But <laughs> I, think, I think we, yeah, like le learning new skills and, and I had a goal that I wanted to learn how to do like a static handstand. Yeah. Um, when, I remember seeing the videos, yeah. Yeah, when, uh, when this lockdown started. And yeah, I managed to achieve it, which is a massive, massive thing for me because I've wanted to do it for years. 
and to, to be able to do it now is just it's just incredible and i'm like really really proud of myself yeah no de- definitely like, like we were saying um the other day we were saying about trying new things and 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 keeping up that momentum as well so not so it's not just during lockdown it continues and to persist afterwards so like if you, you started with that what can you what can you do next so so um yeah that, that would look really cool yeah no so what's what's the next mountain what's the next mountain that needs to be climbed literally, literally and figuratively because you took me we went to, uh, uh the mountain is Scaf- is it scaffold pike have i said that right scaffold pike, yeah in the scaffold pike. sorry scaffold pike uh, <laughs> the weather was so bad the weather was so bad. We went, we got like what halfway up, two thirds up. Yeah, no, it was yeah about two two thirds of the way or about half half the way, and um we were we were drenched. We looked, probably looked like wet dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was the wind speed? Was it like eighty, ninety? There there were moments where I think I had to grab hold of you so you didn't fly off, and you actually grabbed hold of me as well yeah. so I didn't fly off. <laughs> terrifying, absolutely terrifying. But yeah, we need to uh, we need to go back because you. Because you said there's some, is it some waterfalls you're talking about? Yeah, there's the some water, waterfalls that are just just over the other side of Scarfield Pike actually that um, not many people know about, um, and they 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 look like brilliant. So we have to ch- check it out and and go for a dip as well if we get a chance. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Once once we're out of lockdown, the weather's nice. We'll uh, we'll head up. <laughs> we'll head up. So just to uh, wrap up, I'm going to give you some quick fire questions. Sounds good. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. So what advice would you give a young Dan B? That's a, that's a tough one. Um, cause I really appreciate the journey I've had so far and where it's like brought me today. But if we were to like go and get into that DeLorean and, and fly back, what would I tell myself? Yeah. Um, probably to focus on the areas that I, that I really loved in my life. Um, and try not to do everything at once because I, I like sometimes I overthink too much on during reflection. Yeah. Um, and not to be afraid of making mistakes, um, like kind of persevering with the things that I've always like they don't don't go as well as I perhaps hoped. Massively, yeah. I think yeah. I think, but I think that comes of age though. I know I know it's sort of a loaded question asking you what what advice you give, but I think the relationship with failure comes better with age and the more you do it. No, yeah, I think I think you're right there. Yeah. Um. So it's like catch twenty two there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, second question, given the choice of any three people, dead or alive, so any three people you can have, who would you have as a dinner guest? So you've got Dan B and you've got three other people. Ooh. Who would you, who would you okay. pick? And again, they can be from any time period. It can be dead or alive. It can be like literally anybody. So I interviewed Mickey Mills uh, the yeah. other day and he which is one of my friends. He's a uh, boxer and he picked Jesus. <laughs> 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 which, which cracked me up uh, but I, I did say you can choose anyone you want so who who would you go for who would be at your ideal dinner party I think that for me have a think about this um, probably the first one would be uh, Barack Obama oh, um, great shout great shout I mean he's just just such a such an inspiration and everything that he the, the things that he, that he says come with so much meaning as well i mean he really thinks about what what he says before he, he he's even said it um and it and it kind of all flows so it'd be brilliant to see kind of his experiences um how he's got to that point yeah um probably it's gonna say i mean this this is not the this is a diff, more of a difficult one but probably i'd go with my my nan on my dad's side um okay cool so Unfortunately, she's got dementia at the moment, um, so she can't even remember my dad. But it would be brilliant to see. I mean, the, what I've heard and kind of. I mean, I'm super grateful that she's she's still with us. But to see her before she had dementia and really connect and and share those experiences. Um, yeah. She was a scientist back back in back in her day, um, wow. in in Latvia, which is like a, as, as a woman during those times was really difficult. So it'd be an inspiration to see kind of the journey that she went on and 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 how kind of feed off that energy really and i'm sure my dad would appreciate it as well that's incredible um, so you've got the, so you've got you you've got you you've got barack obama you've got your nan nan gran my nan uh, yeah your nan who else you'll have one more person who would you have 
And this this is the moment where everyone, I, this is our fifth episode, <laughs> and the four four people who've gone before you have always always struggled with the fourth person, always. So who oh. who would you go for? Because it sounds like a good great dinner party already. But how, how <laughs> could you, uh, what could you do to make it to make it better? Who could you invite? I reckon to to finish it off. I reckon if we we drizzled a little bit of of uh, David Attenborough to the mix. Oh, you're the first would... person to say that. First person to say him. Okay. I think yeah. I reckon he just bring bring a bring a lot to it, and he's just I don't know. His knowledge is kind of I don't know where he where how he has the memory bank for everything that he knows. Yeah. <laughs> and his 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 voice working with like audio and working with sound. His voice is just a joy to listen to. Like you can <laughs> you can listen to him. He's a bit like a a bit like a Stephen Fry. Yeah. Where his voice is just just calming and soothing. So we've got uh, Danby, we've got Barack Obama, we've got your nan, and uh, we've got David Attenborough. So that that's a that's a solid solid party. Sounds like a good dinner party, that does. <laughs> Sounds like a good dinner party. Uh, last question before we wrap up: Where do you see yourself in ten years' time? So what do you think? Dan B we're doing will be doing in 2030. Hopefully not in lockdown still, but <laughs> <laughs> what do you think what do you think you'll be doing in 2030? Um I can't I so I mentioned before about kind of spreading the message of sustainability in a fun way. Um I work in the communities and other people, but I realise that in this day and age, sometimes to make sometimes to make the biggest difference, um can be done on a wider platform a uh, bigger platform but it can also be done on a smaller platform as well so i think i'd love to go on a, onto a larger platform and to be able to educate others on the sustainable topics once i've kind of progressed and, and moved forward um i know there's a huge tiny house movement at the moment and i've been doing loads of research um and i'd love to kind of put that that research into play and, and, and creating that and traveling and experience more cultures volunteering abroad um and kind of more importantly than that just being happy um really like closer to family friends um that would that's kind of the main, the main goal really i think it's uh, it's so funny you should say that because i don't know if it's the the people i'm picking to do this podcast with but every single one of them has said to be happy like no one obviously people have touched on like money and um material things like cars houses girlfriends boyfriends uh, spouses getting married but everyone yeah. has has said to be happy which i find very very interesting which is i mean, just, I mean yeah you, you see you see you, i mean you hear the different tech entrepreneurs and stuff i mean i remember i remember steve jobs and one of the the last things he was we were talking about was actually of all his achievements that he's had he wished he'd worked on maybe his happiness a bit more and that there's yeah. more to life than the the money side of things so it's great that it's great to see that echoes with other people as well, and 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 yourself as I know you've said before. Definitely, yeah, and I think that's a that's a perfect way to end. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you very much for having me, Belle.